Have you ever seen antique postcards sent from the rich and famous? I'm going to show you a postcard sent from one of the most well-known socialites of the early 20th century and tell you more about her incredible life. Laura May Corrigan was born Laura May Whitlock in a rural town in Wisconsin in 1879. She would go on to help Allied troops and refugees during World War II and receive several medals and awards for doing so. She was also a poet, author, and philanthropist. And I was lucky enough to get the collection of postcards she sent home to her aunt in Wisconsin, and I'm going to show you those now. Uh, this is her in one image. She is on the left, the woman standing up. She was married to her first husband at around uh, this time. So Duncan McMartin was her first husband. She's using his name in this image. They were not extremely wealthy, but she is dressed um, as she wants to be perceived with her big hat, flowers, and huge necklace. She worked as a waitress and may have also worked as a telephone operator and a cigar store clerk before getting a job writing for a Chicago newspaper covering society. So that's really what allowed her to rub shoulders with and um, get in the circles of the wealthy and famous of that era. She was sent to Cleveland in the early 1900s to write a story about James Corrigan Sr. and interview him. Um, she apparently became friends or acquaintances with him with him after that because uh, she would later attend his funeral in 1908 and that's where she would meet um, her second husband, his son, James Jr. Her second marriage was to the heir of the steel fortune, James Corrigan Jr. or Jimmy and they were extremely wealthy. She had a reputation for lavish parties in Cleveland um, but she wasn't really accepted by high society of Cleveland because she was divorced when she married Jimmy and she had come from a poor family. But she became much more well-known in England, uh, where she would live later in her life. She actually became friends with Prince George. It's an incredible story. So she was known for standing on her heads at parties. A rumor was started that Prince George would be at one of her parties, which apparently was not true. But Prince George heard the rumor and he decided to attend and they just hit it off and became friends. Uh, her and her husband, Jimmy, would also attend the Epsom Derby with Queen Mary later. So it's just incredible that I have this collection of uh, people who are hanging out with Prince George and the Queen of England. So even though she was extremely wealthy and had what most would consider an, an amazing life, in many ways it was tragic. Her first husband, uh, Duncan Mac Martin, passed away in 1919. He died of a stroke at 57 in the bathtub of a hotel in Chicago. This image shows who I believe to be her first husband um, at her and James's home in Cleveland. So she and her first husband, Duncan, attended a party here in 1913 at Nagy Rock, James's home. That's where she really hit it off with James and they started having an affair. She would divorce Duncan the very next year, and he would pass away just five years after that. Uh, this is who I believe to be standing in front of Nagy Rock. It's definitely not Jimmy because it looks nothing like him, but here's a second picture of her first husband, um, Dr. Duncan McMartin, who again would pass away in 1919. Her second husband, James, passed away in 1928 of the, at the age of 47, and I'll tell you more about his life in a second, which is um, a tragedy in and of itself but she also had two half-sisters, Vera and Vita. Vera passed away as an infant and Vita would die in her early 20s. So this is the back of that uh, photographic image I just showed you. And on it, she writes to her aunt in Wisconsin, uh, Dear aunt, this is the rhododendron in my yard. I hope you are very much improved in health. Vita is here and looking fine. Love, Laura C. So obviously at that time, Vita was struggling with her health since Laura had to write that she was looking fine. She would pass away just two years later in 1919. Laura herself would pass away in 1948 of cancer at age 69 while visiting her sister in New York City. I'm going to show you their homes uh, in Cleveland and their vacation home. So I learned something from Laura's postcard collection, which is that wealthy and famous Americans would have their own postcards made of houses, which I just thought was incredible. Here is James's house at 814 or 8114 Euclid Avenue in Cleveland. Uh, this house was the one they had before Nagy Rock, I believe. And here is the house known as Nagy Rock or Corrigan spelled backwards. Uh, this next image I'm going to show you shows the garden at their house called Nagy Rock. And uh, the home is in Wycliffe, Cleveland, and is now the Pine Ridge Country Club. I believe it was actually right across the street 
from one of the Rockefellers' homes. So Euclid Avenue area and Wycliffe in Cleveland was a very popular place for the millionaires and oil and steel magnates of that time. So the message on the back of their home in Naggy Rock is really interesting. It says, thanks for your letter. Mother is better and I have purchased a lovely new house for her and am furnishing it all new. She has a trained nurse and housekeeper. Hope you are very well. Love, Laura. So uh, this was sent in 1917. Um, already extremely wealthy at that time, obviously, since she's writing that she just bought her mother a new house and furnishing it all new and has a trained nurse and a housekeeper there for her mother. So her mother would actually go on to live another 16 years and pass away in 1933 at the age of 76. And here is their island home in um, Morrisburg, Ontario. This card was sent to her half-sister Vita in 1917 or 1918. And uh, like I said, Vita would later pass away in 1919. This is what Laura wrote to her uh, half-sister. Having a fine time and gaining in weight, we start to Quebec and up the Rideau on a private yachting cruise for a week tomorrow. Love, Laura. So it's just incredible to hear about the lives or the life of the lives of the rich and famous at around that time. Now, her husband, James, had a more tragic life than Laura in many ways. Um, his sisters and mother, along with a cousin and niece, passed away when their yacht capsized on July 7th, 1900. Uh, here's a postcard of their yacht that you, they would have used at their vacation home in Ontario. So this is called the Ida May, which was named after his sister that passed away on that accident uh, that died at age 15, Ida May. The yacht encountered high winds on Lake Erie and uh, trapped three people below deck. So Ida May was on the deck but was not able to cling to the yacht until rescuers arrived and only one passenger survived, the wife of James Jr.'s Uncle John. So uh, the men of the family were not on the boat at that time. The captain of the boat was actually initially arrested and charged with manslaughter but was later exonerated. And his father, James Sr., would pass away eight years later at the age of 59. Upon the death of his father, James received $15,000 in cash and 40% of Corrigan McKinney steel stock to be held in trust until he reached age 40. So his father initially wanted to not give his son an inheritance at all. He was known as a playboy from an early age. Playboy Jimmy is, I believe, what they called him. But his business partner, Price McKinney, convinced James Sr. to appoint him guardian until Jimmy reached age 40. So Price McKinney controlled James's shares while they were held in trust, and he dropped the Corgan name from the company in 1917, which upset Jimmy very much. And uh, he went through a bitter court battle to gain control of his 40% in stock, and then he purchased another 13% to gain control of the company in 1925. So it was the savviness of Laura convincing other people to sell and he renamed it again to Corrigan McKinney Steel. And after Price McKinney was relieved of his duties as president of the company, after James took control of it, he took his own life just a few months later. Again, like I said, James was known as a playboy. He was called Playboy Jimmy. Uh, he partied and drank heavily. Um, it's hard not to think that the huge amount of tragedy in his life uh, didn't play a role in that. So he had his sister and mother pass away uh, sisters and mother pass away in the yachting accident. His father would die early on as well. Um, and Jimmy would pass away in 1928 at the age of 47 of a heart attack. Laura May and the other owners of the company would go on to sell it. And she would receive an annual tax-free annuity of $800,000, which is just an incredible amount of money, especially back then. So how did I come into the collection of these postcards? Um, Laura never had any children and many of her family members died tragically young. The postcards that she wrote to her aunt were kept by her aunt's family and eventually made their way to an antique store where they sat for years unappreciated until the store closed. An eBay reseller picked up the album and sold it to me for $35. And they had, they just knew it was a postcard album. They did not know the contents. And I saw a few blurry pictures of it before I bought it, but I did not know uh, the treasures that would be in this album. I hope you enjoy learning more about Laura's life. Um, I am always looking for collections of notable people in history and postcards that tell a story. Feel free to email me at dmay, D-M-A-Y at a.com if you have any of those that you're looking to sell or any postcards that you'd like for me to tell a story about. Um, but thank you so much for watching.